Hello fellow cinephiles, film guru here. So I'm continuing on my director retrospective focusing on Guillermo del Toro and today I'm looking at his second film Mimic. This came out in 1997 and starred Mira Savino, Jeremy Nottam and Doug Jones. And for those who haven't seen it, this film really focuses on entomologist Dr. Susan Tyler, played by Mira Savino who genetically created an insect to kill cockroaches carrying a deadly virus. This mutant breed was engineered to die after only one generation. But three years later, Susan finds out that the species has survived and evolved into a large, gruesome monster that can mimic human form. I really like this film. And I think this is a great film from Del Toro to go into making his second film. And this is his first studio film. And he had a lot of trouble with this film. The Weinsteins were too heavily involved all the time. They wouldn't let him make the film he wanted to make. And he disowned this film in a lot of ways. It wasn't until recently, 2014, that he came out with his director's cut, which was much closer to the original vision that he envisioned for this film. And in my opinion, this is the best way to watch it. It flows better, the ideas work better. And I like the way it's sort of put together a lot better than the theatrical version. It got so bad for him that Weinsteins were involved so much that they said to him if they didn't do the changes they wanted, he would fire him and bring in another director. It stated as saying Del Toro was saved by the intervention of Mira Savino, who was a recent Oscar winner for Mighty Aphrodite, produced by the Weinstein company, Miramax. She threatened to quit the film if Del Toro's vision wasn't respected, and she received support from her then-boyfriend, Quentin Tarantino, who had made several films for this for them. Weinstein finally agreed to let Del Toro stay on, but they oversaw the film, final cut of the film. This is another example how the studio just gets too involved in a particular film. They expect it to be a certain way, and they don't let the director create the vision he wanted. And Del Toro is such a unique and original creator, and, and the concepts and ideas that he has. He's the kind of director that you just got to let, let him be and let him do what he's going to do, because he has a clear vision of it. He's so creative and unique and original that they should just let him do what he wants to do. And it's unfortunate that this happened to him. And, and being his second film, it must have been sort of saddening for him and upsetting that he couldn't make it the way he wanted to and that they interfered so much. I'm surprised he kept going. A lot of directors get interfered with studio systems. They ultimately stop making studio movies and go and make independence. And he's been able to do both throughout his career. He never worked with the Weinsteins again, which is understandable. This is a very interesting film, I think, in many ways. It looks at the idea, sort of like the Frankenstein story. So Dr. Frankenstein creates Frankenstein and then Frankenstein's monster and he goes off and does what he does. And he evolves in a way. And this sort of is what this film really looks at. It really looks at how they create these bugs. And they think they're only going to last for a little while, but then they evolve and they grow and they form into something else that's sort of as big as a human being. And they're starting to mimic mankind in the designs of them, the way they look. And they kind of look sort of human in a way. And that's really fascinating. It's the evolution of humanity. And that these things are evolving and trying to overtake you know, the inhabitants of the earth. And I really like that. There's one scene that Del Toro talked about he wasn't able to film. Towards the end of the movie, the characters find themselves trapped in this sort of subway tunnel where all the creatures are. And Mira Savino's character, Susan Tyler, comes face to face with the male of the group. So all the females have wings, but the male doesn't. He's sort of different. And he's the only one, he's the only fertile male in the, in the you know, in the hive, so to speak. And the original idea Del Toro had was that this person formed the perfect human being. He looked exactly like a human being. He's sort of a naked human being in front of her. And he points with his human-esque finger and says, leave. And he sort of said it was as if this creature was saying, you know, goodbye, it's time for you to die off and us to thrive. It's, it's time for the next evolution to, to you know, inhabit the, the earth. And I thought this would have been such a fascinating thing and very interesting. But the Weinsteins felt it wasn't very scary enough. But I would love to have seen this sort of take place. Because I think this would have represented so much of what the story was telling. This film was based upon a short story that was written that sort of focused on a young boy or a man who had a neighbor that was kind of strange that he'd watch all the time. And then he evolved that in, so many, in much larger scale. It still has that element where there's this sort of autistic boy who, who is so obsessed with shoes and he plays the spoons and he sort of starts to see these creatures and starts to see them appear. And he's sort of the only one. And I really like that. The things that Del Toro put back into to Mimic in this director's card 
is really the, the look at humanity and, and how people are using other humans to cr do what they want to do and the manipulation. It has a lot of themes that Del Toro usually has in his films, such as religion and connection and how the creature isn't such a bad guy or a bad thing. It's sort of just adapting and evolving in the world that it's existing in and taking back what it feels it's rightly owed in a way, I guess, and punishing those sort of people who created it in the way they did and expected it to die off and used it in its own, for their own purposes. It definitely has his style and his look, this a lot of, you know, when they, especially when they go into the, the tunnels on the underground, into the, the train tunnels, and the greys and the blues and the yellows and the, and the different colour palette he uses. And the different colours he uses to bring the world to life, I guess, in a lot of ways. The scenes that really stand out for me are the sort of the opening sequence where they come up with the bugs and what's happening. I thought that was interesting, an inter interesting introduction into the world and what was happening. I love the creature designs when we got to see the creature in the shadows. I thought that was really great. And I think he did a really fantastic job creating the look of these sort of creatures. And it sort of reminded me of the Kronos character in a way. Like in Kronos, he has this metal thing that's sort of a bug-like thing. And then he evolved that into what he created here. And I really like that. I think the music's solid. I think it's a much more coherent story, the director's cut, than the original version. And I'm glad he was able to do this. I think it's he's such a great director to be able to take something that he loved to begin with and then he started to hate because they took it away from him or they didn't allow him to, to make the film he wanted to make. And for him to be able to be, come back to it and put everything back in it that he wanted, it isn't perfectly the film, he wanted, but it's as close to the vision of the film that he had. And this was the first time he collaborated with Doug Jones, who ultimately played one of the long johns, as they're called in, in the IMDb description of them, but the sort of mimic bug creatures. And I really loved that. And this solidified their relationship and they would go on to do many more films together. And I really loved that as well. It seems when he found someone or someone he worked really well with, whether it's a cinematographer or an actor or whatever, he always brought them back and put them in different roles. And I really love that. He has a real respect and love for the actors and the people he works with. It is grotesque at points in the film, but it sort of adds to the feeling, the element of it. It's very dark in parts. A lot of sequences take place at night. It's sort of very effective for, for the story they're trying to tell. The only thing I would say is some of the visual effects are dated, especially when you see the creatures move or form or fly or whatever like that. They do use like actual like models and, and prosthetics and phys the physical elements of it. But it's a lot of digital, which I felt they should have went more practical in the execution of this, but it's still effective with the story they're trying to tell. I think the best sequence in this is towards the end of the film, there's a group of them trapped in this um, train car that hasn't moved for so long because this is an area of the railway tunnel that hasn't been used in many, many years. And it's sort of about them trying to work out how to get the thing moving. They've all got their job to do while they're trying to keep away from the creatures. And they ultimately kill one and cut it in half and they have to use their stuff inside it to smear over their body to camouflage the smell of them to make the uh, the creatures who live there to believe that they're part of them. There's also the thing where one of them is hurt and bleeding and that sends these creatures wild and they start attacking the the particular train car and that's really great as well. I just love the, the look of it and the design and I love what they're sort of going for there and a favorite scene in the whole film and that leads to her coming face to face with the male version of it and i really love that as well that was really a great sequence put together mira savino plays a really solid character she's really smart and capable and she knows a lot more about what's going on than anybody else and i really like that she's sort of our eyes into the world we learn through her. She explains it to us. This is great sequence where these kids are collecting bugs and they take them to her to get some money ultimately to eat. And they bring this particular strange bug to her, which ultimately is a baby of the, the bigger creatures that we see in the film. She has this sort of ant farm, this big ant farm happening where the ants are going around doing their own thing. And she starts to explain to the kid that the queen, there is only one queen and she's sort of the boss. And then the male is the only fertile male and he's the one who, you know, 
fathers all the ch children in there and they all have their worker bee sort of elements to it and they'll keep going till the death no matter what happens they'll keep going and that's sort of a good representation and metaphor for the, the creatures we meet later in the film who have evolved and grown and they they go about it the same way that these ants do that she describes and i thought that was really clever as well there's some good you know s creepy moments within the film there isn't a lot of jump scares which i really liked it's sort of more we see something that the 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 main characters don't that's kind of creepy or there's a figure in the background or the way that it's shot it's fantastic like that del toro talked about how he read about that horror comes from two places in a group it either comes from outside trying to get in trying to kill them trying to you sort of like the slasher films or it comes from within and tries to destroy them that way and this sort of film had a little bit of both there's a creature trying to get in but also when they it becomes part of them that they try to destroy them. And I really like that as well. If you haven't seen Mimic, I do recommend it. Think of it more like the fly than anything. It is a bit grotesque in parts and there is a lot of creatures. And if you don't like bugs, which I have a little issue with, then you mightn't love this as much, but it's such a great film. And the only way to watch it, like I said, is director's cut. I just think this movie is fantastic in many ways and I really enjoyed my experience with it. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying this director retrospective series and my look at Del Toro. And if you are, please hit subscribe in the bottom, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Otherwise, until next time, enjoy the movies. <laughs>